actually never decided I wanted to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> um, I think yoga teaching kind of came to me. This same young lady who I, uh, whose classes I attended, she needed someone to cover her classes and she asked me if I would cover them. So she convinced me to go and do a teacher training and just get some idea of, of you know, what teaching a class would be like. Um, I found the teacher training to be absolutely great, just such fun, you know, being around um, lots of people who loved yoga and talking about yoga all day. It was supposed to be for six months and it ended up being a few years because she decided to move on and do other things in her life. And so I taught a very small group of very lovely women at home um, and uh, that was the start of my yoga teacher training and yoga teaching. <laughs> I did the first class, I guess, in a gym when I was 18 or 19 because I was just interested in uh, health and in fitness. And it was one of those sort of trends that was going around that I decided to explore. And in that first class, I remember being a downward facing dog, feeling a lot of discomfort and going, oh my God, what is this? But by Shavasana, and uh, so when we came into final relaxation, then something shifted. And I came into a spinal twist and I found that I was in tears. But not in like a bad uh, way. And, you know, I actually just felt quite comfortable as something was releasing. And after that, then I really noticed that I just felt more comfortable in my body. One class a week turned very rapidly into one class a day because suddenly I felt so much more alive and vibrant. And all of the work stress started to uh, seem very unimportant and priorities completely shifted. So instead of working long hours and then heading uh, to whatever party or bar was going on, uh, then things changed and I was actually basing my lifestyle around yoga. This place is really quite secluded, you know, it's, um, it's not as remote as you might think, but it feels very remote because we have this great big hedge of the forest and the hills. I think practicing here is quite different to practicing at home and also in the studios then sometimes it can begin to feel stressful just trying to get there and trying to find a class that suits you and then maybe it feels a little bit competitive or you haven't found a teacher that quite works for you. And being here, then there's almost a quietening that happens naturally. So coming into this space surrounded by so much space makes it that bit more, uh, I wouldn't say easy, but more accessible just to access that still point within you from which kind of practice can grow. It's also the connection with nature. So you really feel as you're moving and you're looking out through these hillsides that actually there is no separateness between you and your surroundings. You really get that sense of actually, in some ways, there is so much harmony between us and our outside environment. In my opinion, practicing here is sincerely one of my favorite sites because I love coming here at 6 in the morning, the sun is rising and hitting on the mountain. The view is é, é de pura natureza, portanto não há, nem, não há nada aqui de, 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 de construção humana. Eu acho que o que torna aqui mais espetacular é o que as pessoas vão esperar depois da prática. Practicing in the Charlotte on my own is such a luxury. <laughs> And I think that when I'm alone, that the other people who practice here, the teachers in particular, they're actually here with me because during the whole season, We're in here practicing together, you know, including the guests, all of the energies and all the people who try to connect with themselves in this space. The whole room is charged with that energy and I reap the benefits of it. E é fantástico saber que acabamos a nossa prática. A magia pode acontecer quando nós estamos em Shavasana, que é a última postura. A magia do yoga pode acontecer no nosso corpo e que vai acontecer depois, porque no momento em que passamos, passamos daquela porta há pessoas a, 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 a tomarem conta de nós num bom sentido. Portanto, há pessoas que se preocupam e, 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 e não há só pessoas como há pura natureza à volta e, e, e que ajuda 
um, a estarmos calmos. I have so much respect for anyone that chooses to take themselves out of their regular everyday life and just look for answers in a different way. So people come here for all sorts of different reasons. People come on retreat for all sorts of different reasons, but there's usually this one sort of unifying thing of actually I feel like something's a little off or I need clarity on something. Things have been a little bit stressful. I've experienced something that I need to move through. And just coming here and having the space to process that a little bit and connect with other people in a way that's uh, quite playful and fun is really healing. Well, I suppose it's a certain vibrancy that starts to bloom within people, which is really beautiful. It's almost like uh, sort of that inner vitality starts to uh, just flow that little bit more freely. I think some of the limitations or the constructions that we hold so firmly in place at home begins to slip away and then people experience a different kind of freedom just to feel free to be themselves and express themselves freely.